Today is the end of the core programme that we devised for Triangle, where the four teams that have made it all the way through to the final stage get their opportunity to pitch their films to a mixed industry audience. We started in January with 80 writers, directors and producers and encouraged them to form new collaborations. Teams formed, they pitched their projects and we selected the best four who are here today. We're trying off two reasons. One, because it's the writer, director, producer triangle at the heart of the creative process of filmmaking and also because for the first time it involved the three northern regions the North East, the North West and, and Yorkshire and Humber coming together and talent from three regions melding and working with each other for the first time. We're here today to pitch to you a film called Unconditional. We're here to pitch Asif the Massive. A project called Law and Disorder. The Returned is a sci-fi thriller and um, we'd like to introduce you to our world. In London, in particular, you find that there is a melting pot of talent because of the concentration of people who work in film here, whereas in the rest of the country, people are much more spread out. So the purpose of a scheme like this is to facilitate people coming together and recreating that hothouse atmosphere to enable people to, to find talent that they can work with that they wouldn't necessarily have met otherwise. If you've written a script, have you written a script that you, as the writer, um, know exactly who this is for? Do you understand? You know, this whole thing about audience and all the rest of it, this is not the producer's world, nor is it just the director's world. It is all everyone's world. As well as facilitating the meetings, we, we organised a series of workshops and, and seminars for them to give them grounding in the industry so that they could develop their projects, bearing in mind key principles that actually are about working for a market, working for audiences. Like everyone in the film, apart from the main actors, were just people we met. We did, we did the road trip that the film does kind of thing and shot as we went and figured it out as we went a bit. And that obviously kept the price down because I feel like when you write a script, you're kind of inventing a lot of specific detail that you don't really care about, but you have to explain what room they're in and what, you know, a dog goes past or, you know, you're just creating stuff. So you, so you put it in there, then a the producer tallies all that up and goes, we can't do this for less than like two million because of all this random nonsense that you've added. It's really the story you're telling, not the details. I mean, I've told you that I didn't, I wasn't interested in business development. I'm now absolutely obsessed with, with longer term strategic planning, with the idea of how do I build, how do we build a sustainable business and I think I think it's really important particularly in this climate that it's something as filmmakers that we all engage with earlier and then one thing that I think is super important as well as all of this sort of social media which can really really top up you know your own networking opportunities is is face-to-face -face contact with people and being present and being seen and and having good stuff to talk about and being active if you're a UK taxpayer let's say at basic rate tax and I've got my enterprise investment scheme qualifying company, and you put a thousand pounds in, you will get a 20% cash tax rebate off the taxes you pay. If you're pay paying pay P A Y E, you'll get your tax code adjusted, so you're paying roughly two quid a week less in tax. Cool, huh? If I sit down and try and write something, and, and that's ringing in my ears, you know, it's like, um, oh, right, if I'm going to do this job really well, I better include a bit of the supernatural in because that's what I'm known for. Mm. And that's good, isn't it? And that's like believing your own, um, it's like believing other people talking about you and that's just going to screw you up. So three years ago, we founded an event called The Good Pitch. And this meant that filmmakers have pitched their idea for a documentary, specifically with a social kind of action message um, to coincide with it. Now around the pitching table you'd normally see um, kind of broadcast commissioning ex executives um, or private fin financiers and what we want to do is bring in anybody else who might be interested in that film. So for example if you are making a climate change film the members of Greenpeace are probably going to be very interested in that and that organisation should be key to the kind of formation of A, the kind of film's kind of overall kind of structure and narrative but vitally how it gets um, kind of seen by its audience. 
And Eric Fellner, actually, from Working Title, said something which he thought was quite, quite um, interesting. Just before Street Dance came out, he said um, he came up and saw us for lunch and, he, and, and so, so saw some footage, and he said, um, there comes a time in your life as a filmmaker where you start um, wanting to make films that people want to go and see. And he said, um, street dance will be that moment for you, and Four Weddings was that moment for, for them. You know, I've had writers come in and speak in great detail about a story yeah. when I've read the script. And you kind of think, well, OK, I know, I actually know that bit because I have actually bothered to read your script yeah. before, before you've had the meeting. The focus today is about selling, and I have no shame in talking about selling. And the issue of the one-page outline is for you to let the person you are selling to know what the unique selling points are of your project. You know that kind of language, I'm sure you've heard it many times. You could say, I'm just a creative, I don't do things like that. But I have to say to you, if you want to make a living, you have no choice, okay? You can't just expect someone who works in this business to give up their time to read a script, because that's what you want to do, write the script. To read a script and to read it all the way through and do so attentively, and find out it's crap. It just doesn't happen. The problem in 95% of, of pitches we get as a sales company is that there's no immediate hook for the distributor can think, yes, that's, that's it. We, I can see immediately how to market this film. We've been thrilled with the quality of the participants, their engagement, the projects themselves. They've had a lot of mental support and the relationships with those mentors has been really valuable for them. You know, what we have is demonstration that the North of England has, has great talent and can make, we can make really great films. Unconditional. A run-down northern coastal town. A tight-knit community. A loving family a terrible secret. What's not to like about a classy art house thriller with a, with a female protagonist? I mean, I, I love it as an idea. Um, but something like Charlotte Rampling, I think it's very important to, you know, to you know, aim high. I mean, the, the fact is you may end up with somebody who's relatively unknown, but we have it's an awful lot of good actresses of that sort of age. But obviously in terms of giving yourself a little bit of a lift and making yourself stand out, yeah, it'd be great to get Kristen Scott Thomas from Charlotte. Overall, I think we have all ingredients here for a great film. A, sto a story with real heart, a tale of courage and belief, a journey of laughter and smiles. It is a unique British mix, a fusion of flavours. I hope you'll all agree with me that the future isn't big, the future is massive. I think it's a really, really interesting idea. Um, having worked on uh, you know, urban comedies, uh, The Infidel as well, and having just released a cricket film, um, you know, I can see there's you know, definitely something there. Um, so Law and Disorder is essentially about two guys and the extremes they go to try and earn a living. But it's also about two mates who are trying the best to remain mates. Corey and Ethan are probably at the age where they should be settling down a bit, but they're not. They're out there pretending to be coppers. And as the story unfolds, we reveal that as well as all the financial reasons they have for doing what they do, also, they do it just because it's a bit of an excuse for them to drive around together in the car for a bit. So yeah, at its heart, Law and Disorder is a bit of a bromance. And even though I'm a bit embarrassed to admit it, I can really relate to bromances. I don't know why, but I can. I thought the whole thing was really, really good. I think, you know, we haven't seen kind of a northern comedy on screen for, well, I can't remember when. Um, and, you know, there's so much kind of humour associated kind of up there. And, this, you know, classic type of kind of guy as well. Um, so it's definitely, I think, it's a really, really, you know, stick with that. Because it's set in the near future, we can be selective about how we present this world. It's not about spaceships and flying cars. It's a world that's iconic, but certainly different to our own, presented through visual style, design, costume, and makeup. Like all the best sci-fi movies, it's the concept that's big, not the, necessarily the special effects budget. As a genre, it's great we don't get enough sci-fi. I like the idea of these other creatures. I like the fact that they may be infiltrated and that the Alex era may fall for them and, and so they're not completely out and out scary, but it's just the general creepiness, which I think is quite chilling. Um, and yeah, I really like the idea. <laughs>
what we would love is that people on the panel and also in the audience are interested enough, excited by the projects, one or more of them, to, to actually want to continue the dialogue afterwards and hopefully take them into further development, ultimately with a view to, to them being made. Thank you.